Practical SQL Server 2012 Administration and Programming Select Statement Basic SQL Select and Select Into Statements Select is the query statement and the most famous statement of a SQL language. Whenever we want to retrieve data we have to say select. There is another way of retrieving data when we are executing a stored procedure, we, can, we have to say exec and the stored procedure name. And we get data back there as well, but there is a select in the stored procedure. So the select is hidden in the stored procedure, but it is a select. We get the list of the entire table, 16 rows. When we change the context to the data warehouse, and we get the dim product dimension table. We use the English product name to sort it. And this is the English product name. We can scroll down. In the following query, we use the Spanish product name and ordering, sorting, descending and uh, this is a Spanish product name changing the database context back to Adventure Work 2012 instead of selecting all 19 thousand or so rows we select only the top 100 sorted on last name and this is the last name so it's alphabetical this query also sorts by last name, it selects all entire 19,000. It's uh, worth to mention that uh, we live in the age of golden age of computer science. I mean this is so fast to get 19,000 rows back Back in the early days of RDBMS in the 90s, it was very, very slow. In fact, we could not even get 19,000 back. We usually just got a few hundred back. This is the golden age of computer science. We can see how much space is used by a table by executing a system stored procedure and here is the row number as well. In the following query we are looking for last name starting with S. So here is our list 2130 rows and the first name is Shelley only one row only one person John, which should be popular, 58. John and the last name starts with S. 2. The first name starts with J or the last name starts with S. 4300 rows. And this is the end logical condition. So first name starts with J and last name starts with S, end, not OR. So we should get fewer rows, only 221. Let's uh, select the first name 
first letter of the first name and the last name so we can see the combination and it's right here we seen the usage of uh, table alias we can alias columns as well we can alias it by the equal sign or we can alias it on the right hand side say putting the alias there before we comma so this is a column alias we have a where close predicate birth date less than or equal with particular date and the result 17 rows out of the 290 employees of adventure work cycles and in the person dot persons table we have 38 persons satisfying this condition and we have this many satisfying the condition greater than we can add the results and count person dot persons and we get the same number and we can merge the count and the calculation we can use the between operator and we got 396 rows null refers to missing information or not applicable so in this instance we are just looking for persons where the additional contact information is not null notice that we are saying is not null we are not saying equal to null we are not using the equal operator this is special we have to say is not null or is null distinct gives the list of uh, distinct first names and there are 1018 if we look at the popularity list we see descending sort because we want the most popular first Richard Catherine Marcus James and last name distinct 1200 last name popularity Diaz Hernandez Sanchez Martinez we can select the last name and still order by the first name so we are not required to use in the order by a column which is uh, present in the select we can use any column from the table concatenating last name comma first name here is the result this is the old way of concatenating and we are looking where the last name is through A through J 7900 
we will select into a statement we are creating a table and populating the table at the same time. Since we are selecting zero rows in this instance, we are only creating an empty table. Select into is um, a real good way of uh, saving query results, especially in a stored procedure when we may use we save a query results into a temporary table or we save it into a table variable and um, use it in the stored procedure. So let's execute all these select intos. So we don't see any results because we only see the counts because nothing was put into the results set, everything went into the table. So if we want to see what was uh, selected, we have to do a select from the newly created tables. Here is some more select intos. In this statement, for example, executes SP who, which shows all the session in the current uh, SQL Server instance. Now, if we want to see what was selected, we have to do a select from the newly created tables. Here is one more. We are not getting a conflict here because the schema is production and here it's DBO. So let's do select star from DBO location. Now all these tables were created and we can check them. Refresh. So here we see some of the tables uh, we were creating with select Intel. And it's clean up time. We are cleaning up all the tables we selected. The following statement creates an empty table with the same structure as uh, sales.currency. But because the where condition 1 greater than 2, which never satisfied, there is no row satisfying the select, where close, therefore the table gets created but there is nothing in it. And here it is. Well, why do we create an empty table? Because uh, we can uh, insert rows into the empty table, and then the table will become populated. So let's do it. And we can select. Now we see the population of the table. In the following stored procedure, we do a SELECT INTO a temporary table. Now, a temporary table is uh, multi-user enabled, so the stored procedure can be executed by five different users at the same time. There will be no conflict on the POUND SOH temporary table. And then we use the temporary table on an inner join, and we can use it in an inner join the same way, just like a regular table. So we are using uh, the temporary table as a mean of communications in the stored procedure between queries. 
So let's compile the stored procedure and execute it. I think this may work and indeed we well we got null data the store procedure worked. The reason the dates were bumped up by four years. So let's make it eight years. 2008. In AdventureWorks 2012, so there the dates were shifted off the order date to make it more current. So what was working in 2004, now it's 2008 in SQL Server 2012. In fact, we get the same results as before. Here we see a sophisticated query, a select into, and uh, into a table in TEMDB, selecting. But how do we know if a query works before attempting creating a new table? Well, the beauty of SQL is that many things are so simple for uh, testing and development and debugging. For example, if I comment out the into part of it, I can just test the query to make sure it produces satisfactory results. And from looking at the table names that I realize that uh, person.contact is in the adventure works table. So let's execute it. And indeed executes correctly in the adventure works table. So if I comment out into it's going to create a table and uh, populate that table. Indeed, created the table and populated it with 17 rows. And selecting just five according to a random sort and this is the result. Recapping the SELECT statement is very powerful to retrieve information from a database using the relations between tables which express in terms of uh, key connections such as primary key connection to foreign key. Also the relationships are expressed in uh, different logical comparison forms and that even includes uh, function calculations. The SELECT INTO statements creates a table and populates it just with a, in a single statement and it's a very powerful way of uh, creating temporary tables or even creating new permanent tables because um, it does not require a create table, it just requires you saying into and a table name or temporary table name in a regular select query. This is the end of the unit.